Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about how to advertise your window cleaning company. Like, how do you do it? What's best practices? How do you get the best bang for your buck, best ROI? But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, my microphone is not working this week. Uh, And of course, I just sit down. New computer doesn't even have USB ports. Anyway, my sound is not normally this bad, so I do apologize about that. But have a look around. 230 plus episodes of WCR Nation. It is a weekly podcast, comes out every single week, every Friday. Uh, anywhere podcasts are available and of course YouTube also if for some reason you either want to watch which not much is going on you get to see the amazing sticker wall or you can just play it in the background anyway uh, if you are one of the cool kids and you know who you are talking to you it is because of you people who let me put your orders in that I get to buy new computers so thank you and if you ever want to give back a little bit kind of virtual high five of awesome let me be your rep i am a rep for windowcleaner.com window cleaning resource um and shameless plug give me a call 862-312-2026 save that number i'm the only jersey shoot me a text put everything in your cart be like yo everything's in my cart pull the trigger i love it love it i really appreciate it um you you guys who let me be your kind of guy, your rep, uh, absolutely means the world to me. It really, really does. That's how I make my cheddar and how I live. So thank you guys. Anyway, on another side note and another shameless plug, if you haven't yet, listen, let me let me just be blunt about American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's absolutely amazing. But every one of you who's watching is not subscribed to the magazine yet. What the heck, man? I thought you were cool. <laughs> if you do want to get a subscription to America Window Cleaner Magazine, go to awcmag.com, and uh, that's like a double extra awesome high five. There's also a sticker club if you like stickers, either way. Well, today we are talking about how to advertise, or just advertising window cleaning in general. Uh, there's some like big time rules, and I'm not going to tell you our why, because everything is a little bit different, but there are some major things that you want to consider when getting into starting to advertise. Now, with that all being said, I'm just some guy with a camera and a mic, right? So these are just suggestions, obviously. Uh, If you do want to send me an email about how uh, angry uh, I make you, it's jersey at windowcleaner.com. Why not? Uh, Everyone loves to get hate mail. Uh, No, uh, but that's what we're talking about. In advertising in, in the first place, let me put this out there. Now is not the time to do it, right? Right now, when I'm recording this, it is November, and we are all really, really, we are really focused on all of our busyness, right? We're all really cash rich right now. We're coming off of a fall. I hope all of you are doing absolutely awesome, but from what I'm gathering, uh, the industry as a whole is going great. People are going crazy. Of course, there's people who are getting cold and starting to shut their uh, shut down for winter. But um, we're we're not thinking of advertising as much, which we should be. We should have been advertising since the fall started. Remember, advertise when busy, not when you're slow. But getting into into winter here, people want to advertise. They they don't have the income sometimes coming in. All of a sudden, January hits, and maybe you didn't plan well enough, or maybe they didn't uh, save enough, or maybe the spring is not coming for a while, and then people want to advertise. I'm not telling you, never would I tell you, to advertise this time of year. It just doesn't make sense. It's not good. It doesn't help you. It doesn't do anything for you. No one cares. It's like trying to sell a cheeseburger to a a vegan. Like, You can't do that no matter how great the ad is. If they don't want it, they're not going to buy it. Same thing with window cleaning in winter. So with that being said, let's dive in to kind of a little bit more specifically on how to advertise what works and what doesn't, how to kind of make it get the best ROI. Now, first and foremost, I have to say, 
every area is going to be different, but these are kind of the guidelines. And the first big one that I see people kind of just miss the boat on is they don't advertise the same across all platforms. They create one ad for Instagram. Like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to make something for Facebook. And then they make something for Facebook, completely different ad, completely different look. Then they do paper ads. Oh, look at this. Oh, I got a great idea. Then they do flyers or EDDM like this. And it completely doesn't match. Not at all. But people don't necessarily realize that it has to match. It really does have to match. Because not only... Are you going to explain your services, let them know what it is, which is very important, but you have to also resonate with them. Now, the same thing in EDDM, which I won't necessarily get into. That's every door direct mail, if you didn't know. It's a program by the post office that blankets carrier routes. So that means everybody on carrier route XYZ gets a flyer or something that you're giving, right? The way that something like that works is the repetitiveness and the familiarity of the piece, right? Same exact piece gets sent out once a week to the same people for three weeks, three times. People go, well, that just doesn't seem, that. that's how this all works to trigger in their heads. Same thing with advertising on all other platforms. If you create, and this is how a professional marketer does this, but if you create something that is awesome, right? We'll get into split testing and all that stuff. But if you get something where you're like, this is it, all everything points to this, this is going to be my marketing campaign, it then has to be done in full format, and then you break that down into the pieces you need. Uh, flyers, door hangers, postcards, uh, maybe a website uh, page, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Like You take that one main thing and then cut it into the right sizes that work. You start with one thing and make it across all platforms. Not only does it make it easier, but now when somebody sees something on Facebook, but they got something in their mail, all of a sudden their brain's like familiar. That looks familiar. That looks familiar. That looks familiar. And as soon as they're like, did I see this everywhere? They stop to read it. They're like, oh, I know that. Yeah, I know that one. Oh, if I need window cleaning, I got to call these guys. That's how it works. It's the long play, but it also makes a ton of sense just with everything. So cross-platform, making it the exact same makes sense. Now, I've even gone as far as um, in a lot of uh, ad campaigns, there's some kind of like design kind of in the background, right? To make it just so it's not normal playing. We did uh, our logo uh, colors were blue. So we did uh, three color schemes or three blues that were all a variance of the blue that is our normal one. And we had like these kind of swooshes in the top that were kind of like in the background. But those swooshes that were in there, that feel, that background of everything was on every piece of digital marketing, every piece of print marketing, and our envelopes. Envelopes, uh, um, uh, letterhead, stuff where you would think is not going to be as specific. You can't do a whole ad. It's that feel so that everything across the platform works. Now, this is why big companies like McDonald's, Coca-Cola, and all these other things, they make a, car a marketing campaign, and they use that marketing campaign for two years, five years, right? They just beat the death out of that campaign because they've done all the testing to find out that not only does it work, which again, we'll kind of get to, but they put it across all platforms and all of a sudden it's familiar. Who doesn't know a Coca-Cola bear, right? If you get a flyer, if you get like a letter or it's in a magazine or it's the same bears, the same scene, the same scene, the same, same, same. Now, we're never going to be Coca-Cola. You know this, I know this. But what can happen is we can kind of make that same translation. So keep that in mind. It's definitely worth doing. Um, another one is the message. People sometimes kind of forget the message itself is kind of what sells. Sometimes, and people do this also with uh, 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 wraps, vehicle wraps and that kind of thing, but they try to do everything, right? So here's the services that we offer, window cleaning, pressure washing, but in those genres, I do inside, outside, route, commercial window cleaning, I do roof cleaning, I do uh, driveways, house washing, uh, hardscapes, pool surrounds, 
gutter cleaning and screen repair. Like I could put all those things on there and it totally overwhelms somebody. And just like a page of a book has to physically be focused on a red. But if you do that same thing, instead of listing all of those things, you look at your numbers and go, I'm a pressure washer. That's where I make my cheddar. I'm a window cleaner. That's where I make my cheddar. Take those. Boom. Put it on there. Your postcard. Now, whatever's going on in big letters across the whole top says window cleaning. All uh, advertising in general, print, digital, whatever, has to convey one message that if anybody glances at it, I mean, if I could have that piece in my hand and throw it away, by the time I throw it away, I've already registered what it is for. Because that is going to trigger. People are about to throw it away. They see window cleaning. You can't help but read a word or two words, right? But if it's a book, they're not going to read it. They're going to look at it and go, yeah, put it, throw it away. They never registered all the stuff. Their brain can't. But one big letter, one thing gets them, oh, window cleaning. Oh. Then they look at it. Now it's up to you to then upsell later, let them know your other services, get them to your website to be interested, see everything else, right? What people think they do by adding 10 different services is that, well, if somebody needs gutter cleaning, they'll see this and go, I need that. No, because people do not, and you do not, in any ads, unless something triggers your interest, read all of it. You just don't. You don't read it all. What it is, is a catchy picture or a title, then you read, right? So understand your message and understand you're focusing on one message, one message, window cleaning, pressure washing. You can upsell the stuff later. Understand that if you do it that way, it allows you then to send multiple pieces, but still with one message. The big thing is, is that sometimes people put it all out there and they go, well, you know, uh, 5% of our business is gutter cleaning, but I need to hit those guys. Well, that's not the way to do it because your 5% is just muddying the water for everything else. You'll have a lower ROI because it's not instant in their brains. And a lot of us are guilty of this. We do it on wraps too. I've seen a bunch of them. People send me something and they're like, dude, look at this wrap. How awesome is this? And it will be a book. Dude, it's done. Like, I'm not going to like poo on your wrap, but if it's already done and I can't figure out instantly what you do, no one's stopping to read it. The only time something happens is if they're interested enough to see what it is, stop, and then they can read stuff on your car. It's not a website. It's not made for that. All it's to do is to get your attention, catch number, or get you in the mindset of needing that service. If it's just window cleaning on your thing, Oh, window cleaning. Yeah, let me call these guys. Tell them about everything else. Oh, yeah, let me check out their website. Super simple, quick, easy to remember URL. Boom. That's how that all works. Is once they get into it, it has to trigger. This is the reason that um, a McDonald's or uh, whatever uh, fast food restaurant advertises everywhere. They put one thing. Yeah, they sell a bunch of stuff, but guess what? It's a billboard of one cheeseburger. It's their best-selling or most famous cheeseburger up on a billboard. Simple picture and a logo. All it's made to do is that people driving home look over and go, oh, man, I'm kind of hungry. See the logo. They don't tell you information. They don't give you all the facts or sell you on the cheeseburger. They go, hey, cheeseburger? Right? That's what we're really trying to do is we're trying to get somebody interested enough to look at what you're doing. That is it. That is the focus. That is the main part of it. One message, don't muddy the waters, I'm telling you. That one message cannot be, cannot be. Again, preface this by saying I'm just some dude. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what you think. It's your business, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but do not advertise only price. Do not advertise only price. If you advertise only price, only price is what you sell on. That's all you have to offer. If your USP is price, that's the wrong way to do it. If your unique selling point is you're the cheapest in town, 
You're also the one making the less amount, least amount of money. Why are you doing what you're doing? Like, why would you advertise that? Now, can there be a coupon or something or listing prices on there so that people understand at least ballpark stop tire kickers? Yeah, absolutely. But the big thing in any type of sales is not the price. It's adding value. It's adding value. So a lot of times people look at things because they're not their target market. They look at it and say, uh, window cleaning. Oh, gosh, man, I wouldn't pay $200 for window cleaning. I wouldn't pay $300 for window cleaning. Ugh, like maybe, maybe cut it in half. I don't know. Because they're trying to sell themselves. You're not going to sell yourself even with half. You're not your target market. We're a luxury business. It's not about the price as much as what they're getting. If I have two companies, both companies are window cleaners, right? They both have the same color. They both look the same. One guy is a hundred bucks and the other guy is $200 or 150, whatever's relatively comparable. And the one guy goes, yeah, uh, choose me. I'm the cheapest. And the other guy goes, here's what we offer. We have 100% satisfaction guarantee, seven-day rain guarantee. All of our techs are certified. We have logoed name tags, star programs. We have blah, 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 blah. This is what you're getting with us. Here's what you're getting. The other company goes, here's our price. Are there people who still be like, I don't care what I'm getting. I just need to be the cheapest. Sure. That's like one or 2%. Truly. Because even somebody who's trying to price shop understands value. No one, no one doesn't understand the, the concept of value. Value is not price. But people always want to advertise $50 off with it. That doesn't work when you're in a luxury business, right? Nobody in anything is like... Um, yeah, I'm a plastic surgeon. If you call right now, you get $100 off. Here's a coupon for facial reconstruction surgery. Here is here is this fancy big luxury service. Here's a coupon. Ferrari, Lamborghini, they don't have sales. They don't have a Christopher Columbus sale. They don't have coupons. They don't have any of that. And the reason is, is because they are selling a luxury. What they do offer, what they do sell, what they do advertise is how you'll feel in their car. Their Italian leather is hand sewn. The engine is absolutely tuned to a 200th micron. I don't know, engines. <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? That's what they do. They focus on what you're getting the value. Because if you're already getting that type of, of thing, a $50 coupon or a sale, come in now and get uh, $1,000 under MSRP. No, 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 no. What you do see that on is the base model on vehicles. When you see any of those deals like, you know, now leasing one ninety nine a month with you know zero down comes that that's the base model read everything it's the base model they got nothing else to sell but price if they're selling the exact same item uh, uh Dodge Ram fifteen hundred base work edition we'll say and the next guy is selling the exact same truck in the same color the same package. It is the exact same product. Now, there's nothing to sell. There's no value on that. You go to price. If you look at the two trucks, you go, well, this one's a little bit more, but you get free car washes, free rotations and maintenance. Everything's included. You get this, blah, 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 blah. You get the value of this, blah, blah, blah. People will go to that one. They're still selling cars at that price. But if you have two things that are exactly the same, it goes to price because there's nothing else you can sell on. There are no two window cleaning companies that are exactly the same. So do not sell on price. Sell on value. It's a hard concept sometimes. Really is a hard concept sometimes because people just assume uh, no one's hiring me because I'm too expensive. If that's in your brain, that's what you're conveying. 
People still buy Ferraris, Lamborghinis. If they're in the market for that thing, they're going to do that. If they're looking for someone to clean their yacht, they're not looking for the cheapest. They're looking for the company that is the most elite, special value. This is what they offer. Understand that's what you are. Even if you don't believe me, do like like a week, a month. Take like a month. You want, Are you planning like spring? April. April, you are a luxury business. Make your price reflect it. Make your advertising. Build that USP. Tell me why it's absolutely different and do it. And I'm telling you, you'll absolutely, absolutely kill it. Anyway, another big thing that people do not do when it comes to um, advertising in general, really, is knowing your avatar. If you haven't done this yet, so how do you sell something when you don't know who you're selling to? And if you just start a window cleaning company, and this, you'll, if you don't believe me, here's the proof. Anybody you ever tell you clean windows, which I always like, this is a side note. I always really, really like telling people that uh, I'm a window cleaner. I own the window cleaning business for 16 years, but people go, oh, what do you do? I'm a window cleaner. And they go, oh, that's, no, it's like, yeah, there's tons of, tons of glass around. You got like, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, do you do those big buildings, the tall ones? Oh, those ones with the really big houses down there. Oh, I bet you'd like that. Everybody focuses on these big jobs. That's who they think in their brain. Oh, that's who I want. Look at that big neighborhood, right? That is the idea of when you think you know who you're selling to. Somebody knew you go, oh, uh, uh, you're starting a business? Yeah, yeah, man. We got a ton of monster houses here. That's cool. I hate monster houses. I do them. But I don't like them. That's not my bread and butter. My bread and butter is cookie cutters. Your bread and butter is cookie cutters. Maybe you're in a storm area and you're the guy who does storms at $40, $45 a piece. And you kill it because you're the guy that does that. You're specialized in that. That's your USP. Right? Knowing your avatar is the who your customer is. Now, I did sell my business um, uh, a few years back. So I don't have this in front of me because legally everything went to him but our avatar i'm going to try to remember uh, ballpark but was like the uh it was a female 38 year old with two kids uh one dog and one cat and uh it was a wife with a uh part-time stay-at-home or part-time job and a husband who was in usually corporate corporate style setting um that was our avatar that was our avatar there's more in that i could tell you you know hobbies and things like that there's so much research that goes into this but if i know that my person, the, the person who buys the most, my like ideal customer is a uh, housewife that's about 38, degree, 38 uh, years old with a dog and a cat. I can now sell to that person. I could sell to that person. It's like the old thing. You go into an office to have that sales meeting and you see the guy's got pictures of golf him on all the golf courses he's got golf clubs up in the thing he's got golf uh you know putting greens and he's wearing a callaway uh polo guess what he likes yeah he likes golf and if you know he likes golf what do you do you talk golf you've seen it in movies you've seen it in everything sit down oh man you hit the links lately Oh man, I just played uh, Breckenridge uh, like uh, two weeks ago. It's awesome, man. I can't believe that. Yeah, you got the chance. Oh, I played that. Yeah, I got uh, some family over there on Trump too. Another really, really nice course there in, in Charlotte. Man, I just played all this stuff. Is just all of a sudden common ground. This guy is like, this guy's cool. What if you? What do you like? What do you like? You like hot rods? If I start talking hot rods, tell you these hot rods I got. I love hot rods. I'm always at hot rod shows. So cool. You're like, yeah, it's this dude. I like this dude. That's your connection point. That is where knowing your avatar is who you sell to. If I put an ad out and I go, wow, I really like this. This is great. I'm a dude. I'm a 40-year-old dude 
who is not the one who is my typical person, my typical avatar. If I like it, the avatar of mine is not going to like it because they're not me. So now I have to split test in that market. I have to take that and understand what my avatar wants. You have to. Look at, we're looking for winter projects here. Like winter's coming. We're not going to be cleaning. We're going to be sitting there. This winter, this winter, do this. Figure out your USP and figure out your avatar. And I'm telling you, 2022, you will kill it. Kill it. Know your avatar. Know who you're selling to. Right? By the way, if you don't believe me uh, that companies do that, do some research on Google. I guarantee, I've not done it, but I'm guaranteeing you can find what uh, the perfect customer for whatever product it is exists somewhere. If it's a big company, they've done the research and they've paid a firm a lot of money to do that. But no matter what you do, advertising wise, you have to split test it. There's nothing worse. And I see this all the time. People do the advertising wrong because, again, they think they know uh, best when you tell somebody this is how, you know, like an EDDM. I've had people take to the penny their last bit of money going into winter, take an EDDM thing and just send it to, to like, you know, 5,000 people. And then sit back and go, people will call. Uh, there, I heard there's like a, you can get like a 1.5% uh, ROI. You can when you do it right. That's not the right way to do it. You're going to have a crappy ROI. If you just guess, this is awesome, right? And you send something out, you just put a lot of money into something that you're just hoping is awesome. And there's no way for you to find out what part of it is awesome. Even if the, the campaign is great, there's no chance. I mean, 0.00001% that you guessed every aspect of it absolutely perfect. I'm telling you, when you split test, you do a piece. This piece is all blue. This piece is all red. This piece is all yellow. Usually, you would split test the two together. You would spend a blue one and a red one. Which one had the most calls? Red? Cool. Now you do a red one and a yellow one. Which one had the most calls? Still red? Red is now your color. Everything is then built around that. Let's check the font. Let's check the window cleaning. Do people call? Or if I put pressure washing. Now I got a red flyer with window cleaning and a red flyer with pressure washing. Send it out. Got more calls on the pressure washing. Cool. Now I'm focusing. I'm dialing this in and after. And this is, we're again, we're talking long play here. We're talking about building a, a company. We're not just doing a job. Now all of a sudden after a year of split testing, you have a really, really good idea. You're always going to split test from there. If you split test, one does better than the other, stick with that one. If at the end of a year, your red window cleaning flyer is still the winner, now all of a sudden it's so dialed in. Every aspect from what it says to how it is, to the call, to the deals, to the, the value, to the everything that's on that you have dialed in, now you have an ATM. Now you have something where you put this flyer or mailer or whatever and it is absolutely perfect for your area. Now your ROIs are like 3% plus. You're getting huge ROIs. Huge ROIs. Once you start doing that, that means that every dollar I spend in marketing or advertising, because I have it so dialed in, is guaranteed to average me back $3. Like, I would put a million dollars into that because I know. I know that it's proven to some degree. Advertising is always up in the air, but it's proven. If it's proven, then you know that that's going to be your best return. If you don't know it's proven and you guess, now you're just like, oh, I hope it's the best thing ever. And it's not, you lose a bunch of money. We're thinking of a long play here, right? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, like I said earlier, if you have not gotten a American Window Cleaner magazine, what the heck? Do me the biggest, biggest favor Go to awcmag.com forward slash sub. Get your subscription. If you like stickers and you're like, magazines are dumb and I can't read, then just get a subscription to the, the stickers. Go and do all of that. Invest in your future. Invest with these the articles, the new stuff. Like, 
posters and pictures it's just so cool our culture that we have in window cleaning is absolutely amazing so definitely take advantage of that and last shameless plug i'm a rep for window cleaning resource windowcleaner.com that's who i am so if you want a guy which i please i hope you do my number is 862-312-2026 that's my cell phone let me know be like yo just tell me that you watch your show it's super awesome i want to build a relationship i want to have as many of you on board um as i can and yeah that's what we do hopefully we can be a resource for it either way i definitely appreciate you watching until next week go out there and be epic